Hey, how's it going? I uh, decided to make a video about uh, how to navigate faster in your terminal. Uh, this is something I've seen that uh, a lot of people struggle with. People who are, you know, ostensibly really into computers, so maybe really into Linux, or maybe they're, they're software developers. But when you see them use their terminal, it takes them forever to get anywhere. And I think, uh, I think being slow in the terminal is one of the reasons that they end up trying to kind of avoid the terminal, staying away from it. So what I'm going to show you today is, is fairly basic. If you've been using the terminal for a while, you're probably going to know all this stuff already. Uh, but maybe you'll pick up a thing or two. So the first thing I want to show you, the absolute basic, is just tab completion. Uh, so I'm here in my home directory. Let's, uh, let's actually go down into the, uh, the, the root directory here. So I'm in uh, slash. Now let's say I want to get back to my home directory. This, this is what I see a lot of people doing. So they'll type CD and then the name of the directory. So CD home slash and then the name slash something like that. Even worse, if they had to get to their code directory, they'll say CD home slash name slash code slash some program slash like that. And then if they make a mistake, if they, if they get something wrong here, then they'll type out the entire thing again. So, okay, if you make a mistake, you can always just hit up and, uh, and you know, fix your code. But the, the most important thing here is tab completion. Tab completion is super simple. So get back into my slash directory. If you're using bash or you're using ZSH, you have tab completion already, no matter what. So CD slash H, and then I hit tab and it goes to home. And then my name is Tom, so T, Tom. I want to go to the code directory, C, code, great. And then I want to go to that evil pseudo, E, evil pseudo, done. Super, super simple. So type a letter, hit tab, type a letter, hit tab. I think it's actually pretty rare that I uh, type out the full name of, of any path. I'm almost always just typing CD code, okay, great. And then where do I want to go? Maybe my blog, B, something like that. So you shouldn't be typing out every single thing every time. Uh, tab is your friend. If you're in your home directory and I type CD down and I, I want to hit tab uh, to go to my downloads directory and it's not working, the reason this isn't working is because uh, the built-in uh, tab completion is not, uh, is not smart case sensitive. So if you're using oh my ZSH, you already have this built in for you, but if, if you don't, uh, it's really easy to set up. So I'm in ZSH again. So I've got just these three lines right here. Everything's gonna be in the, the uh, description below so you can just find these lines and copy and paste them. So once I set this up uh, and then uh, just open up a new terminal here. Now if I type CD down and it's going to autocomplete for me uh, case insensitive. Okay, the next thing I wanna show you is something that I didn't think to do for a really long time but once I did, it became super obvious. So there's probably, if you think about them, there's probably a few directories that you go to all the time, like every single day. If you're, if you're, um, if you're like me, I go to my downloads directory all the time. Uh, I'm a software developer. I work on an app that has a front end and a back end. So I'm always going to the front end directory. I'm always going to the back end directory. So if there are places that you go all the time, you can set up a simple alias to just go there uh, anytime you want. So right now I'm in the home directory. Maybe if I could type DL and go to my downloads directory, that would be pretty great. So I'm gonna set that up right now. So uh, scrolling down here, I've already done this before. So I'm just gonna uncomment it here. So alias DL uh, equals CD uh, downloads. Great. So DL and I'm on my downloads directory. Go into the root and then type uh, DL again. No matter where I am, uh, it'll work for me. Yeah, so if you're a software developer and uh, there's something you're working on all the time, so let's say I'm working on this evil pseudo program all the time, I'm not really, it's just a simple script, then you can uh, edit your ZSHRC file. Uh, and of course, I already set this up earlier um, like that. Uh, there we go, and then now I can type evil and I'm there. Okay, so just those two things alone, you're already gonna be at least twice as fast as you were if you weren't using them. That this is the kind of advice I would have wanted to hear uh, a year or two ago when I was getting really into the terminal. Now, the, ne the next one uh, is just using CD in uh, kind of a clever way. So 
let's go in back into this Evil Studio directory. Now, let's say I wanted to get back to my home directory. So a lot of people don't realize this. At any point, if you want to get back to your home directory, you type CD, you don't give it any arguments, and you're back in your home directory. So if I go into uh, slash etc, type CD, I'm back in my home directory. Great. Uh, another thing I can do, let's go to my blog. So CD code blog. There we go. If I want to go back one directory, I'm sure you know how to do this, cd dot dot. Now, uh, let's go back into the blog. If I want to go down, or rather up two directories, um, it would be nice if I could type cd dot 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 instead of having to type cd dot dot slash dot dot like that. So go back, code blog. So uh, I want to be able to type cd dot dot dot, and that's not going to work because uh, ZSH doesn't know how to interpret that. But I know if you're using oh my ZSH, you'll think, well, I, I am able to do that. And the reason you're able to do that, uh, I actually looked at the ZSH source code and uh, this is what they have in there. So I'll just uh, uncomment these things right here. So alias, just another alias, this time dash G, meaning that it's uh, going to be evaluated no matter where it is in the command line. So normally aliases are just at the start. This one could be anywhere in the command line. And so dot, dot, dot is just dot, dot, slash, dot, dot. Uh, dot, 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 dot is dot, dot, slash, dot, dot. You, you get the idea. So uh, let's go back into evil. And now I can do CD dot, dot, dot. Great. Perfect. I'm back in the home directory. Okay. Another one a lot of people don't realize is CD dash. We'll bring you to the previous present working directory, your PPWD. So uh, CD dash, CD dash uh, will toggle me back and forth between directories. So if I go into my root directory and I go, oh, actually I want to be an evil pseudo. Well, of course I can type evil, but I can also just type CD dash like that. Okay, next thing I'm gonna show you is one that maybe a lot of you won't actually know because it doesn't come uh, with oh my ZSH uh, by default. So this is the Z command. So uh, Z or Z, so I'm Canadian. I, I go back and forth between Z and Z. So what Z allows you to do is go to your most uh, recent directory. And you might be thinking, well, recent's not a word. Actually, it is a word. You can look it up in Wikipedia or uh, Wiktionary or wherever. Recent means frequent and recent, frequent and recent, that combination. So if there's a directory that you go to often and you've gone there recently, it will be more recent than a directory that you rarely go to or haven't been to in a long time. So uh, with Z or Z, uh, I can type Z and then part of uh, the directory that I want to go to. So let's say I want to go to my blog. So I type Z blog and it's going to know, okay, you normally go to code blog. So uh, I'm going to take you there. If I want to go to Z down, downloads, it's going to find it for me. And th this thing, this thing is pretty great. Like I, I use this all the time when I'm trying to go to a directory uh, that I don't have an alias for, and I can't remember exactly where it is, Z, and then I, I type the name of it. I was working on a little app, which I'm gonna show uh, probably next week. It's a little drill sergeant app I'm working on. So I type Z drill, it's gonna bring me there. Um, I think this thing gets the right directory for me like 95% of the time. So uh, instead of having to kind of like hunt around, like, you know, CD, CD, LS, LS, I just type Z and then uh, whatever the directory was. Another thing I should mention is that you don't actually have to go to the directory uh, in order to work on a file. So uh, let's say I want to work on my uh, kitty config. I see a lot of people doing this. So cd uh, dot config slash kitty ls great, and then the edit the file kitty uh, dot conf like that. Okay. Of course, you don't need to do that. So if I'm back in my home directory, I should do vim.config, kitty, kitty.conf. There I am. Okay, so you don't actually have to go find the file every time. I think the reason people do this is because they're so used to using something like Finder or, or some kind of GUI that that's the behavior they get used to. So let me uh, load up a, a GUI here. And uh, th this is what people are, are kind of used to, right? So you find the directory. You look inside, this is kind of like ls. You go find the next directory. Okay, great, you find the file you want to edit, and then you uh, open it up with uh, your editor like this. So, so a lot of people will kind of recreate this when they're in the terminal, so the cd ls, cd ls, cd ls, and you're kind of wasting your time. And if you do try and use the terminal like you would a GUI, it's always gonna feel way less comfortable. 
Okay, so if you made it this far, um, I'm gonna guess that uh, you're into the command line and you probably are also are using Vim or at least Vim curious. So I'm gonna show you uh, a couple ways to navigate a lot faster in Vim and, and uh, might surprise you, I'm gonna tell you this, I, I never use a file explorer in Vim. That's not true. I almost never use a file explorer in Vim. I have one, I use the built-in NetRW if I have to, um, but I, I very rarely actually end up using this uh, file explorer. And the reason I don't use it is I, I just find them a distraction. I don't actually need to see all the files that are around the file that I'm working on right now. Um, so even when I wasn't using Vim, I would always hide the file explorer. And now that I am using Vim, I almost never use the file explorer. So how do I find files in uh, Vim? Well, I'm using a Vim plugin called uh, FCF, uh, Fuzzy Finder. It's an extremely popular plugin. You may have heard of it already. Um, and so I use it through Vimplug, so I set it up like this, and then I have a couple of uh, aliases. Aliases, is that the term in Vim? Anyway, I have a couple of shortcuts uh, so that I can use the functionality very quickly. So let me give you an example of what this looks like. So um, this is my blog. I can go into content, blog, and I can find a video like this. Uh, here's one where I was on a podcast. Um, okay, great. That took me a really long time to get there. So if I want to do this a lot quicker, I hit, uh, for me, space F. And now I can just type the name of the file and it's going to find it for me. So if I type uh, podcast, here we are, I'm in podcast. If I type, uh, what's another one? I did a uh, blog post about Colmac. So I type Colmac. And there we go. Here's my two blog posts about Colmac. And uh, I guess also I can see that Gatsby generates some index files for me based on that oh, and some JSON files based on that too. Okay, so FCF is fuzzy finding um, the based on the title of the uh, file. So just to prove that I can type col ack, it's still gonna find it for me. So you can see that it hasn't highlighted the M because I skipped the M. So that's really useful. Now my blog is uh, pretty small, so it wouldn't really be hard to navigate around here, but if you're working on like a big project, maybe with lots of developers, it's, it's really useful if somebody says like, can you bring up the, uh, I don't know, the, the items controller? Well, you don't wanna have to start hunting through, okay, where where is that controller? Is, is, is it over here, is it over there? You just type space F and then I go, okay, items controller and it'll find it for me. Obviously I don't have it here because this is my blog, not uh, some kind of web app. Okay, very, very similar, I have it set up so space H is going to go through the the recent files that I have been editing. So I can I can see the podcast one that I was looking at, uh, Kitty Conf, which you saw me editing a little while ago. And if I start typing something, so if I start typing uh, Kitty, okay, great, it's gonna search through the files I've recently opened. And finally, and this, this is the one that I think is like, I get the most use of, is uh, I have it set up so space space, I can search within the files uh, in this directory. So for example, I wrote a blog post about uh, trying to go vegan for a month uh, to, uh, to make my mom happy. Uh, I failed, I went vegan for about two weeks and then got sick, totally unrelated to being vegan. Anyway, so if I start typing MOM, uh, I can look here and I go, okay, moment, 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 and then there's mom. I'm sure every editor has a way of, of doing that, but I love just being able to hit space, space, and then I can find anything. So let's just choose another word. Let's use the word technical, so space, space, technical, and then, uh, great, I can find out that uh, I wrote a blog post about a game called Hack I made a while back, and it's got technical right here, and, and there's a few more options right there. The place where I find this the most helpful is when I get uh, an error you know, from our error tracker uh, saying, okay, there's an error, I can't read property of undefined, at line, blah, 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 in this file. So I can just type space, space, and then type whatever I want, and it's gonna find it for me right away. Removing that friction makes a huge difference. Um, if this is something that you end up doing, you know, easily 20, probably 100 times a day, if you are actually a, a developer like I am. Okay, so how did I actually set that up in my uh, NVim? So I think this probably works in uh, in regular Vim too, but uh, it definitely works in NVim. So again, um, I've got uh, the plugin installed right here. And then if you if I keep going down here, so let's look for leader. So 
if you don't know, leader is just a special key that you get to define in Vim. Uh, mine is just space. So I was saying space earlier, it's actually leader. Um, so right here, leader F is FCF, search files. Leader H is history, search recent files, and then I have space space. That's the one I really love, search in project files. So you can set something up like that too. One program that a lot of people seem to really like and I haven't ever found much use for is uh, Ranger. So Ranger is a uh, TUI, not a GUI, so it's a terminal user interface uh, file manager. And um, I, I, don't, I don't really get it. So if, if you really like it, let me know why. But uh, I almost feel like it, it's just a crutch for people who are still um, used to like a, a graphical um, file browser. If there is something about it that you really enjoy, let me know because I'm curious. Maybe maybe I'm missing out, but I find that I'm faster just working for the command line. Okay, that's it. Uh, hopefully you learned something. This is the kind of video I really would have wanted to watch uh, when I was first getting into the command line, you know, a year or two ago. Um, and I, I really can't stress enough how much faster you can become as a computer user if you uh, get rid of your fear of the command line and you just kind of make that the place uh, sort of your your default, your home on your computer instead of Finder or, or heaven forbid, some kind of app launcher. Okay, hope that was helpful. I'll uh, talk to you soon.